Have you ever taken a fifth freedom flight route? Today we are going to experience Zhejiang Province's first fifth freedom passenger route, Hangzhou to Auckland via Sydney. Of course I will get off directly in Sydney. So what is the fifth freedom and what are the famous fifth freedom routes in our country? Today let's take a closer look. The first leg of today's journey starts from Beijing Daxing, heading to Hangzhou for a transfer. Generally, when we fly abroad, it is between two countries. If you take our national airline from our country to the other country, it is called the third freedom. The return trip from the other country to our country is called the fourth freedom. The fifth freedom, also known as the intermediate point right, involves a route that starts or ends by passing through two foreign countries and carrying passengers or cargo. Tonight's MU711 flight departs from Hangzhou, China, stops in Sydney, Australia, and finally arrives in Auckland, New Zealand, involving transportation between three countries. The benefit of this route design is to maximize passenger loads in one flight, avoiding capacity waste and increasing profitability for residents. Of Australia or New Zealand, they can also experience our Chinese Airlines passenger service on the Sydney-Auckland leg. The plane landed at Hangzhou Xiaoshan Airport Terminal 3, but the second leg to Sydney is arranged at Terminal 4. Passengers need to walk a long distance from Terminal 3 to Terminal 4, then ray check in and go through security again. Hangzhou Airport's transfer experience is obviously poorly considered. The dining service in Hangzhou Terminal for International Departure Area are also limited, so it is advisable to complete your meal before going through security and border checks if needed. This is the plane that will take us to Sydney tonight, and a 32200 registration number B5938. This aircraft belongs to China Eastern Airlines Shanghai headquarters, with an age of 10.6 years, introduced on December 9, 2013. It often serves on international routes. The cabin seats look very old, and the PTV screen resolution is particularly low. It's rare to see such an outdated screen in 2024, and the touchscreen is not very responsive either. Although the aircraft is only 10 years old, the cabin looks like it's 20 years old. Cathay Pacific does a much better job in aircraft. Maintenance, as night falls, this plane takes us off. I have to say, the hardware of this plane is too old. Actually, China Eastern has very rich routes to Sydney. Besides Shanghai, there are also second-tier cities like Hangzhou, Nanjing, Jinan, Xi'an, and Wuhan. The flights from the Shanghai base to Australia use brand new A350-900, while the others can only be allocated. These old A330-200s. Today's journey is not all bad, the schedule is very well arranged. Taking off at 11 p.m., you can have a late night snack and then sleep directly. Wake up the next morning, have breakfast and get ready to land, making the 10-hour journey quite bearable. Good morning, it is 4 a.m. domestic time, and we are now over the Indonesia. This route was opened on November 5, 2023, as Zhejiang's first fifth freedom route and the first fifth freedom route to Oceania from mainland China, which was widely reported in the news. This route has two options. MU711 departs from Hangzhou, stops in Sydney, and ends in Auckland. Returning from Auckland to Hangzhou, MU877 goes from Hangzhou to Auckland first, then to Sydney. Returning from Sydney to Hangzhou, there was a small incident at check-in yesterday. A gentleman originally booked a direct flight from Shanghai Pudong to Auckland, but due to a schedule change, China Eastern transferred him to our flight. However, the customer service did not inform him about the transit visa required for Sydney, and he was stopped at the Hangzhou counter, making him quite angry. So everyone must pay. Attention to the transit visa requirements when taking such international stopover routes. Entering New South Wales, the scenery outside the window changes from the brown-yellow of the Australian inland to green. Before landing, there's a chance to see Sydney's cityscape, Harbour Bridge, and the Sydney Opera House. The routes from China to Australia are highly competitive now, and the prices are very cheap. Overall, it is worth experiencing.
In the next video, we will return to China from Sydney and explore the various good aircraft at Sydney Airport. Stay tuned.